Hey everybody, welcome back. It is patch 9.2. The ranked season has just begun, and I thought it would be a good time to show you an actual high rank Udyr one trick build. Meta Solare used this build to reach Masters just before the ranked reset, and he's going to be collaborating with me on this video and explaining it himself. By the way, guys, the support you guys have shown him yeah, on his Twitch channel has been so cool to see. So I'm really thankful that you guys went out and showed him all that support. It's really yeah, nice. Yeah, no, nice try, dumbass. And you know what happened when I took out the trash while being asked? I got attacked by a squirrel! So Meta, how would you explain the goal or the playstyle of this build and why do you like it compared to other common builds? The Aftershock Udyr playstyle allows for aggressive plays and item builds with large innate bulkiness from your runes. This playstyle reduces death with large bulk without sacrificing much in the damage department. Compared to the common Presti attack build, this build makes Udyr a team fighting monster with large innate tenacity. Can you explain your primary rune tree? The primary rune page on tier 1 we're going to be running with Aftershock. This offers you the best early game bulk with a huge burst of armor, magic resist, but also it scales with not only your natural stats, but it scales with your HP and AD, making the AoE burst from Aftershock actually a very potent finisher. With tier 2, Demolish is the best choice in this tree line, providing early tower plating pressure in any lane you gank. Demolish can be the difference between getting first blood tower and losing it to the enemy team. Furthermore, as this build lacks Triforce, this makes up for it giving you tower threatening power if you have the need to split. It also scales with your health, so if you happen to grab a mountain, you're going to watch towers disappear. Bond of Life provides very little in early game utility, the strongest point of Udyr and should never be taken. As this build often maxes E second, Shield Bash gets very little use as well. In the tier 3, there's actually a split choice between Bone Plating and Conditioning. Bone plating is the most common in this aggressive meta, best taken against enemy champions who will want to duel early, like Zen, Zhao, and Camille. If the enemy scales better, or is weak early, take conditioning to scale better. Second win is a laner's rune, it should be avoided on all jungle Udyr builds. Lastly, unflinching is simply the superb choice in how I round out this tenacity field build. Unlike Legend Tenacity, this rune provides its upfront tenacity from level 1 if needed. But even more, it provides slow resistance, a rare stat that helps diminish Udyr's greatest weakness. Revitalize is extremely weak as this build doesn't deep, dip deep into the healing department. If for any reason the enemy has low CC, you can choose to go overgrowth. But in most matchups, the sheer amount of early game tenacity that Unflinching provides cannot be matched for this build. With this rune and Legend Tenacity, you will never find yourself locked down by CC for long. Add in Merc Treads and Steric Gauge, and well, the enemy will finally get to meet the God Deer and he's fresh out of mercy. So aside from the precision tree, are there any other secondary rune tree options you would go? With this rune set, I actually do not take any other secondaries besides the precision tree. The reason why is right now, the sorcery tree only offers water walking as a unique pick that I would consider. The demolish tree only offers AD, ravenous hunter, and as well as cheap shot, which again is not required for this build bulk. However, a good secondary option should you not want to go triumph and legend tenacity, would be the Inspiration Tree. Here, I would consider such choices such as Magical Footwear, Approach Velocity, and Future Market should you decide to go that route. So I noticed that you take the Health stat instead of the Armor stats with this build. Can you explain why? Certainly. The HP stat shard synergizes better with the build in the mid to late than any of the other defensive options, providing more in raw stats from level 6 onwards in gold value. Furthermore, once I have Sterics added in this build, it's just more raw HP added to the bulk of the shield that procs, allowing me to survive harder and tougher fights. With the recent update to armor, however, taking armor with blowing plating will ensure a much more early game safety and should especially be considered. Can you explain why you think Warrior plus Sterics is ideal compared to the popular Warrior with Trinity Force? Warrior Sterics has one strength that is lacking from Triforce, cheap and efficient bulk that scales. Not only is the gold cost of this build cheaper than Warrior Triforce, but your bulk purchases only serve to make the Steric Shield more and more powerful. Come late game, you can also switch out Warrior Enchant for Cinder Hulk to triple down on the value of HP purchase should the need arrive. Giving up carry potential to reduce your potential deaths cannot be overlooked. Avoiding giving up bounties, map pressure, and resets in certain champion kits is a powerful tool to carry your solo few games. So is there ever a time when you would choose an extra damage item after Sterax if you're snowballing, and what are some possible options? Some other items I say would fit this build is Frozen Mallet. This will provide you an excellent amount of crowd control. 
especially for those Nocturnes and other champions who have to walk to get to your carries. A secondary item we'll also consider is Death Dance. While this build lacks on providing a lot of AD, this item would make your shield be able to absorb more damage. You should be able to spam in more abilities. Last year on my channel, I did an Aftershock Tiger build, but with a different approach. I rushed Tiamat in the Cleaver, then Sinner Hulk. But I feel like compared to Warrior and Sterex, the early game damage is not even close. Even though Sterex is pretty tanky, Sterex gives you a lot of AD, just like Warrior. So what's your opinion of building more HP like Cleaver, Titanic, and Sinner Hulk and less AD? Do you think that's viable in High Diamond and Master, or do you need to have early damage to carry? Warrior Enchants is the only jungle item that is 100% gold efficient. Especially in the current meta, the game is kill or be killed. And while you may survive the Cinder Hulk, your teammates may not survive the enemy. Finding the balance between damage needed to kill and bulk needed to survive is a constantly evolving lesson in higher elos. In some games, you'll need to go Cinder Hulk to be able to survive, while other games, you'll need Warrior Enchants so you can apply more pressure to the map of grabbing objectives and giving your team the head start they need. So I notice sometimes you run a build that's a little bit more tanky than the Warrior Sterex and a little bit more damage than the one I suggested. So can you explain your Cleaver Sterex build? Some of the variations in my build actually include if the enemy team comp is heavy in frontline bulk, such as a Scion top, Sejuani jungle with a Braum support. This to me translates I'll need to bulk your frontline build. Here, I'll sub in the Warrior for an early Black Cleaver, then a Sterex gauge, and finally Cinder Hulk. By the time the build is wrapped up with this core, I have a nearly 1k shield procking for safety any time my Sterex gauge is activated, allowing me to shred their front line with my Black Cleaver and nearly immune to CC due to having over 70% tenacity with Sterex gauge, Merc shreds, Legend tenacity, and unflinching procking. So after the damage item core, what kind of defense items do you usually pick up? For defensive choices, my usual choices are Rando and Zomin, Spirit Visage, Adaptive Helm, Knight Vow, Dead Man's Plate, and Thorn Mail. I tend to favor choices to provide high HP returns to feed into the Steric Shield, and will usually build the HP components first, unless if for any reasons I need the resistance to counter and fed enemy carry. Alright guys, for the gameplay, first I'm going to show you one of my games using the Warrior Sterex item core, and then next game we're going to look at ranked solo queue game from Meta Solari, and he used the Cleaver Sterex Center Hulk, and we're actually going to dual commentate that. But for this one, it's just me. Alright, so starting off with blue, that's what I always do on this side, and I like to go for an aggressive play most times. Even though this is a tanky build, I still like to go for the aggressive plays. This time, looks like I was standing on a ward, so it doesn't happen. Then after you waste a, a few seconds bot lane, that's when Scuttle spawns. So then after taking the bottom Scuttle, I just run straight up to the upper Scuttle. That one's already gone, so grab my red buff. See what we can find in the enemy jungle. Can't really gank either top or mid, so I just keep farming. Go to Raptors. And still can't gank top or mid, really. And I'm pretty low, so let's just kill one more camp. The Krugs go back to base. Got a thousand gold, so we can pick up a Stalker's Blade, Basic Boots, and Control Ward. In bot lane, the enemies are kind of pushing, so let's run down there. I got Flash. Go for the squishy Nami, Tiger Burn. So I step in the bush, checking to see if the AD carry would get close. And our AD carry speeds me up. TP from top lane. Try to peel a little bit. And dodge that Poppy ult, and... We get her. It's really nice playing a tanky build when you're used to being so squishy, like I only play squishy builds. And there's just certain fights where I'm like, I would usually just die due to being stupid. But Aftershock just saves me barely. Get a flash from Gragas. So I know Kindred doesn't have red, and I know that her red buff is up. So I run all the way over here, go around the bush just to see in case she was doing it. And, there she is. She jumps straight into my tiger stance. Take that red, do a little bit of clearing. Work our way up top. And, looks like another kill. Don't waste any time, go straight to Rift Herald after we got the kill advantage. Steal a couple camps from the enemy jungle. And we got 3,500 gold, so let's go back to base. So I spend half of it on the warrior. Then I also pick up a pickaxe and 
upgrade my boots, so I decide on the Ninja Tabby because the Kindred is the only real threat. So, just decided to try to start this dragon, even though the enemies are around. I figured we could probably win the fight. Misfortune lands a great ult, does a lot of damage. But, I get poppy ulted into the wolf pit, and my bot lane and mid lane all die. So, run back in here. Try to get this poppy now. So, I flash past her because I'm trying to get close to Nami. And I'm taking a step after every hit so I can stay in a range because she's pretty fast. I don't want her to have any distance gained on me. So I'm using every moment I have where I'm not attacking to instead move. Have another Mountain Drake. Oh, there's a Kindred. This was really badly played by me because it didn't start with Bear Stance. My Aftershock was not ready anyways, so whatever. Let's go back, finish that Sterex Gauge Power Spike. Now, that's when you get extremely broken. Sterex will give you more tenacity, and just makes you, like, unkillable. Ooh, this time we dodge the Poppy ult. Takes us a few seconds to catch her, but once we finally do, we're gonna take a step between every attack, and she's not gonna be able to ever escape our range. Stealing a blue buff. Ooh, try to stun each of them. Try to get a tiger proc, and we get it. You get some health back from Triumph. Heal a little bit from Turtle Stance, and this guy not really doing much damage to us. Because the only real fed one is Kindred. Steal some more stuff, go back to base, it's another 1700, pick up a Warden's Mail and a Giant's Belt for the Kindred. And now the Warden's Mail is going to reduce her attack speed. So here, Nami gets a little too close. She tries to ult, and she misses ult because I'm already standing behind her. And I'm attacking full speed the whole time. Like, she dies before my Aftershock even procs, even though I started with Bear Stance. How many attacks was that? One hit in Bear, Smite, one, two, two hits in Tiger, step out of the ult. So, that's what high AD builds look like if you're on a good game. But most high AD builds are not going to be tanky like this. They're going to be like Halo Blades, or Phase Rush, or uh, Pressy Attack, or Electrocute. Nothing tanky like Aftershock. Let me just solo Baron real quick. And remember that the Aftershock damage scales with AD just like it scales with HP. So I go up to split push top lane as my four teammates are pushing mid lane. And since I'm 12-0, the enemies are gonna have to send two people up here. Inevitably, as their tower is getting destroyed, they send a Poppy and a Kindred. Meanwhile, in mid lane, my teammates with the Baron buff wave push down a tower. They win the four versus three. There's me attacking the tower. So, Misfortune gets close, lands a three man ult, and shreds them all. Meanwhile, the other two guys are just up here chasing the Udir. Let's look at the next game. This is going to be a ranked game solo queue from Meta Solare, and we're going to dual commentate this one. Alright, so my first clay route is always from Blue, Gromp to Scuttle. Uh, this is one of my personal favorites. I run in almost all of my games. This puts me in position, generally, especially if my bot lane gets cheesed, to take both scuttles. As you can see here, I do my usual clear with Gromp, opening with a bear stance stun, four tigers attacks, two bears, four tigers, and one last bear to finish it off, going in position for the next scuttle. I try to avoid being seen. Like I'm trying to avoid mm. being seen as much as humanly possible. I check the scuttle, see it's being taken, where I'm like, all right, that's just unfortunate. So from here, I'll go from there to red to Krugs, and I see an opportunity to gank top lane. Nasus has no mana. So I go in, flash, Q, Aftershock, as you see here, guys, absolutely allowing me to tower dive. Had I had Presti attack, I would have traded a kill for a kill. Instead, I walk out for free. Now, so Juani, for some reason, decides she can invade a new deer. I promptly and informatively inform her that is not such a possibility. <laughs> Calling my teammates for, to pick up another kill. 
And Talon decided he wanted to join in on the fun too, so I go ahead and give him a bear hug as well. Good movement. Staying in range of all these people. Mm -hmm. Taking one step yep. between every... Uh, Yep. After every auto attack, I just orb walk to keep up with them, especially with Sejuani and uh, with unflinching and si with Sejuani, unflinching is pulling out a lot of its value. Oh yeah. Every smite. So Jax is getting pushed in. Here comes Udir to get this Nasus. Look at this movement right here. Just taking one step between every attack, staying in range for that aftershock proc to hit the Nasus, and cutting off Nasus's route as he's trying to run away. So during that whole time, all I'm looking at is one step ahead, taking one careful movement. If you notice, I'm trying to block Nasus from walking through me. Mm -hmm. Stay in range of Aftershock to get that nice perk damage. And then since I have Flash, I know Nasus doesn't have Flash. Nasus has no mana, so I know all I need is just enough mana to finish the job. Do top. But wait, there's a Talon. Yeah, unfortunately, Talon went to go give me a hug with his full ult combo. So you pick up a Phage, Stalker's Blade. I needed to carry, so Phage is going to give me a lot of ability. As you can see here, that mobility is actually letting me keep up with the Braum as he's trying to walk away. Oh, yeah. And he didn't get that very far from me now, did he? So Ocean Drake. Now he got just enough to get that Black Cleaver waiting on the 1750. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, guys, always try to make sure your backs are optimized as possible, looking for those big power spikes. With Black Cleaver, I'm able to go ahead and ignore Nasus, getting a bear stun, Look at that or walking speed to Black get Cleaver. closer. And right now, I'm actually trying to avoid taking the tower till I get closer. No reason to add damage that I don't right. need to. Not trying to actually stand in front of them, you just want to stay close enough. Correct. I want to stay close enough that I avoid taking the tower shots because there is no re free tower. Mm -hmm. Now right here, Anivia cuts off the Talon, so I'm go. I have Black Fever. I weaken the Sejuani, but the second Talon gets close enough to me, I get on top of him instead. I flash to get the Triumph heal. Soraka comes in for the heal, healing me back up. I'm able to go back. In. Ezreal, unfortunately, poor X50, flash into the wall, and I pick up another kill. Here again, I'm focusing on the lowest health target I can first. Switching over to the Juani once she's put into my range and mm -hmm. Nasus escaped. And Soraka's just being a uh, very good. And this guy gets cocky. Yeah, the black unfortunately. Cleaver shred surprised him. Mm -hmm. Nasus gets a very, very cocky play here. Not respecting my armor shred and my dot, I put him back in the dirt. Now, guys, no, without Triforce, I am not that good at tower pushing. So, what I'm doing is trying to use my Tiger Dots to knock out. Oh yeah, a couple minions, minions. And then and then use them to help help me take out towers. I'm gonna pause it. So when you're attacking a tower, your tiger stance is gonna be sitting at three stacks. So if you attack a minion once, that'll kill that minion, and then you can just attack the tower a couple more times, get another tiger proc ready. Because well, minions will sometimes start stop targeting the tower and start targeting the minions instead. You want them to be focusing on the tower with you. This is the three item spike. Right now, I have a 998 shield, so I pretty much don't die in team fights. So I go for the Sejuani first, but then the Ezreal's low. I flash in, put a dot on him, and then look, they're CCing me, and I do not care. I work my way from one to the other. Talon gets close, I turn on him instead. Braum and Sejuani so CC. Me, I go straight onto Sejuani, and look, as all their CC means nothing to me. That I'm is actually crazy. Stand, yeah, like, when you have that much tenacity, you simply ignore the enemy team CC. Oh, here comes Talon. As, no, there goes Talon. I, I, my job is to keep him off my Soraka, so I'm looking to fight him. My Soraka is able to sit, save herself, so I'm looking for an opportunity to get on top of Talon and remove oh. him from the field. Unfortunately, Soraka dies to the Ezreal, but we got the Talon. So it. we fight front to back, peeling off Sejuani, Black Cleaver shredding through her armor. Jumping straight onto the Brahmin Ezreal. I have Yasuo. We're good. Again, I'm standing in front of Yasuo. You guys notice I'm sitting in front of Yasuo to try to eat any Ezreal cues. So that way he stays nice and healthy and can go in the fight. Alright, so this fight, we start this one a little bit late. Again, I'm trying to fight front to back. I'm trying to kill the Sejuani first and she's on top of me. And then Talon decides to disrespect me. So I turn around and just go slap and give him a good slapping. Look how long 
four people have to sit on top of me to put me down. Let's look at this tower damage here. First, the dead man's proc. Then, a couple hits, and then the big demolish proc. It only takes a few hits to kill these towers. Late game, once you get the demolish. Because you don't have the 24, so... You gotta wait for that health to stack up first. Yes. With Demolish, like, this is absolutely why Shield Bash and Fawn Watch simply don't compare. The amount of tower damage you can drop with this build, with little AD beyond your two offensive purchases, is simply ridiculous. Throw in a mountain or two, and you are literally as good as an ass. Able to lock down that Sejuani, even though you don't usually want to focus the tank, she's the only one that got out of position and can shred her health with that Black Cleaver. Yeah, with Black Cleaver, I am I am a threat to anybody and everybody. Saving my Flash to save my Soraka because she has been doing good work by me. And since I'm bulky, I run right down into the Nasus, the Braum. Right in the middle. Shredding down damage. Dragon number four. Ocean Drakes, generally not a big fan of them, but we have an Anivia, and Anivia is a big fan of having more access to mana. Now you pick up a Knight's Vow and you put it on the Yasuo, I believe. Yep, I put it on the Yasuo because right now Yasuo is my best bet to get a lot of healing in the team. As you see here, sitting in the middle of all of them with my Yasuo, I'm able to take a big amount of burst and damage, but unfortunately my team loses this fight. Luckily, they left Ezreal with me, so <laughs> I was able to pick him off and run for the hills. And as much as they try to chase me, I have Dead Man's Plate. Had Talon chased after me, I would have given him a nice turnaround and probably killed him too. Now, see right here, right. again, Sejuani's out of position. I'm going to go ahead and shred her down, reducing her out of the team fight as quickly as possible. Normally, tanks probably think they can get away with that, being out of position, but you just shred her so fast. Mm -hmm. And remember, guys, I'm only running two damage items. After that, I literally run down. Unflinching, I do not care about any of his peel. His teammates fall apart, and I turn back around. Now, Nasus is a little bit of a different dog here. Knight's Vow is actually healing me because of Yasuo sitting on top of him. Ooh. But with Nasus's R, I have to respect that damage. But unfortunately for them, they didn't respect the Jack split push and we secure the win. Alright guys, so that's going to wrap up the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Meta will actually be live streaming today, starting at the time this video is uploaded. So, it's a good time to go check out his stream if you're just watching this video right on the first day. I will link his Twitch channel in the description. So guys, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. And make sure to go let Meta know that you liked the video as well. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.